Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. The first story, my girlfriend hit parked cars but the drivers got revenge. The second story, manager ordered to make burgers and I made them. Today's first story is, karma strikes yet again. So this weekend I was supposed to pick up my mom from my grandparents place since my dad was out of town and the place is 100 kilometers away from our city. Mom has driver's license but does not drive. Since I don't trust my car to leave the city with it, I proceed to take my dad's car that he left at home to go pick up my mom. Since I would not be using my own car for the duration, I decide to give it to my girlfriend to go shopping and such while I am gone. So we wake up Sunday morning, we live together, get in my car and I drive us to my parents place to pick up my dad's car. I leave in my dad's car and girlfriend leaves in mine. I don't even make it out of the city and I get a call from her asking if I could come back since she'd been in an accident. I head back since the site of the accident was at the very end of the street we lived on. Once I get there I find out that once she reached the end of the street, she made a right turn and hit the first two cars parked on the right. Honestly I didn't know how to contain my laughter. I mean hitting a parked car? No. Two parked cars? That takes skill. So I proceed to talk with the owners of the cars and offer to pay for everything since my girlfriend was at fault. I had no problem going to the police, except for the 3-6 to six hour waiting time every time you go to the accidents department, but offer to fill out an amiable form. This is something we have in my country where if you have an accident, both sides just fill out the form and be on their way without contacting the police. I live in the capital city and we get lots of accidents on a daily basis. Since it was Sunday and all the insurance places were closed, I could not acquire such a form so I proceeded to let them photograph my insurance exchanged phone numbers and assured them that we were neighbors and that tomorrow, Monday, I would contact them with the form to fill it out. All is fine and I leave for my grandparents' place. On the way there I contact a friend that works for insurance and he mails me a form along with a reference for a service station that would have their cars repaired in a day. I proceed to call the guys and tell them that I'll be back in a couple of hours with the form and we'll get everything settled today. To this one of the guys says in his position he's entitled to go to the police so he'll be waiting for us there should we decide to come. This is where I pulled a 180. So I was trying to be a decent human being and repair the damage my girlfriend caused and this guy wanted to waste 3-6 to six hours of my Sunday because he felt entitled. Fine. At this point it may be useful to mention that I've studied law to a master's degree, have the degree and have been working at law firms for over 5 years so I pretty much know the laws better than the cops. Karma starts to kick in. I call the guys on the way back from my grandparents and ask them to grab a copy of the form that needs to be filled out for me as well. These forms have a number order on them and first come first serve. They tell me they cannot since there's only one per person. This is BS, I know this for a fact. When you ask for such a form the cops even ask if the other party is here to give one for them too. Regardless, I get there after they had been waiting for about 2-3 to three hours and request a form. They had numbers 56, 57 and I had 89. Mind you each case takes about 20-30 to 30 minutes, lazy bees. So when their number comes up I was just getting my form and as they enter the office I also enter and ask the cop. I'm also a part of this incident as it was a three-way accident. Should I not also be here when you talk to the other two parts? The cop proceeds to tell the guys to go out of his office and come back when all three of us have filled out the report. Guys proceed to wait another 30 minutes for my girlfriend to fill out the report and then we all go in once she's done. Now we get to the core of the problem, the most incompetent police officer I've ever seen. I'm sure even those among you with no legal background or knowledge will see how pathetic this guy is. People who filed reports, the other two guys, one of them did not even have a driver's license because it was his mom's car and his girlfriend filled the report. The other guy had a driver's license and filed his report, although the car belonged to his parents. This is relevant since the only people legally allowed to file that report is either the owner of the car or the person driving it at the time, which none of these two were. Cop finds my girlfriend guilty, as she truly was FFS, and proceeds to fill out the paperwork. I ask him, Officer, do you know the regulations for parking on the street this incident happened on? No. And do you not think it's relevant to the case? Now I don't remember exactly what he said but it was all gibberish ending up with you really dislike cops don't you? To which I answer, I dislike incompetent individuals in any profession. He ends up getting his way since he was the authority in the situation and proceeds to ticket my girlfriend and hand the guys copies of my insurance to get their cars fixed. Small detail I left out. Cop did not take pictures of the damaged cars as is mandatory by law for any case that comes across his desk. He literally has no evidence an accident ever happened, apart from the word of the other two guys. I'm sure that any policeman reading this would have a field day. Q Karma As soon as I get home, I start to do exactly what society and my profession taught me, sue him. 
I filed a lawsuit on Monday and got a date in four months. Litigation in non-penal cases is very slow in my country. Usual time to finish a lawsuit is anywhere between one and eight years, depending on how much your lawyer wants to push it. The thing is that she was in fact at fault, and had they just taken me up on my offer and not wasted my time, they would have had their cars fixed by now, Tuesday. But they were entitled to they went to the police. Fact, parking regulation on that street, as any other for a matter of fact, states that cars should be parked parallel to the sidewalk, not on it, not perpendicular, parallel. The street has a few apartment buildings so there's nowhere near enough parking places, so the neighbors made a convention to park perpendicular to the sidewalk, to fit more cars, taking up a whole lane of traffic, but that's another story. The thing with conventions is that it's all fine and dandy, till something happens and the police get involved. Then law states you must take responsibility for what happened. So basically there's no chance whatsoever that we'll lose the lawsuit, and I will even drag it out as much as possible. I'm thinking I could get it up to four to five years, no probs. Now, another kink is a law that states that any item that's under litigation does not produce legal effects. In translation, this means that until the judge gives a verdict to my lawsuit, the ticket is suspended, so the guys will not be able to fix their cars, not even on their own dime. It's somewhat assimilated to evidence, but at a much lower scale. Also, once the process is over, not only will I not be paying for their repair, they will be paying for mine. My main argument in the lawsuit is a legal concept, known as a causality link, which applied to my case, means, yes, my girlfriend caused an accident, but that accident was caused by you parking your cars illegally. If you would have parked legally, there would have been more room. Your car would have not been in that spot and thus would not have been hit, regardless of my girlfriend's actions. So basically, your action of parking perpendicular caused the damage to my car. Best I can tell, it was a Sunday. I came and assured everyone I would pay for everything and then left in a rush. Must have looked suspicious. Although I did everything I possibly could to assure them I was no con man, let them photograph my insurance, gave them my address which was two buildings down the road, my phone number, they photoed the license plate on my car. I really can't imagine how I could have dodged them after that. They made a fuss, they paid. I would have been fine either way, since I do realize my girlfriend did cause damage, so I do feel morally obligated to repair that. Until he shows himself to be a D, end of morality. The second story is, I didn't ask what you think, okay? In the late 1980s, my first job was working at a well-known fast food chain. I've been working here a couple of years at the time of this story, and had worked my way to crew leader, but had just been passed over for promotion to ship manager three days before. It's around 7 p.m., and we had just finished the dinner rush, and the newly promoted manager, NPM, decided to save some labor and send the bulk of the crew home and just keep the closing crew. We had one person covering drive through one person in the grill, me, one person at the front counter, and NPM. At this point, it's important to know that this fast food chain was running a promotion for their most famous hamburger item, two for two dollars. And of course, this was very popular. With one employee in the grill area and the equipment and prep methods that were used at this time, it was possible to make this item six at a time. We had code names for cranking out these items from the grill area at speed. Six pull six meant that you make six of this item and when you finished making these six times, you started the next six. With this method, you can make about six items every two and a half minutes. Six turns six meant you start six of this item and when you flip the meat on the grill, you start making six more. With this method, you can make six items every 75 to 80 seconds. So, what happens 10 minutes after the NPM sends the bulk of the crew home? We get a large Greyhound bus full of senior citizens that walks into the restaurant. About 80 people flood the lobby and start lining up to place their orders. From the grill area, I see the flood of people, assess the situation, and decide to start making some food. However, I choose not to make our hot sale item since I don't think the bulk of these customers will order this. I decide to make fish, chicken, and smaller hamburger items, which I believe this group of people will order. Just as I finish delivering the first wave of these smaller items and about to start another, the MPM pokes her head out of the office and notices the situation. Obviously, the lone front counter person was overwhelmed, and the NPM rushes to help take orders. On her way to the front counter, she yells to me in the grill area, NPM, I want you to do a six turn six until I tell you to stop. Me, I don't think these guys are going to be ordering that, are you sure? NPM, I didn't ask you what you think. They made me the manager, not you, and this is what needs to be done. Time for the malicious compliance. I start to crank out the burgers and don't bother to wrap them up. I'm working furiously and get into a rhythm, turning out six of these every 75 to 80 seconds. About 15 minutes pass and there are about 60 burgers made. With only me in the grill, there isn't time for me to box the burgers and put them in the bin. I'm stacking trays of finished burgers on any flat surface I can find in the grill area. NPM is still taking orders at the front counter. She hasn't noticed how many burgers are piling up in the grill area. At this point, I decide to ask her if she wants me to continue. Me, do you still want me to do six turns six? NPM, did I tell you to stop? Huh, 
Well, she's taking the customer's orders, so she must know what's going on. I go back to the 6 turn 6. Another 20 minutes pass. There are now another 90 burgers, and I'm putting trays of finished burgers in the sink area. Straddling fryer vats, etc. And she still hasn't told me to stop. At this point, all the customer orders are taken, and they are now trying to get orders out. The smaller fish, chicken, and burger items are long gone by now, and I've had no time to make any more. NPM yells back to me. NPM, we need chicken, fish, nuggets, hamburgers, and cheeseburgers. Me, so you want me to stop the six turn six? NPM, what? You're still doing that? Are you crazy? Me, you didn't tell me to stop. I'm doing exactly what you asked me to do. At this point, she walks back to the grill area and sees the fruits of my labor. There are burger trays everywhere. The prep table is a disaster. The grill needs to be cleaned. And I can't even get the fry vats to make chicken or fish, since there are burgers stacked on them. NPM, I can't believe you did this. We're never going to sell all of this. This will ruin my food waste goals. Me, I specifically told you that I didn't think a 6 turn 6 was a good idea. And you told me to do it anyway. I asked you if I should stop, and you told me to continue. They made you the manager, so I assumed you knew what you were doing. NPM, you did this on purpose. Me, I did exactly what you told me to do, so yes, uh, it was on purpose. NPM then storms back to the front counter, and I start packaging burgers and making the food that was actually ordered to fill the customer orders. She didn't speak to me the rest of the night. The next day, the store manager asks me what happened, and I told him exactly what I was instructed to do. The front counter person was able to verify the instructions that were given, and I never heard anything more about it. The NPM was transferred to another store shortly after this, and I was promoted. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.